This is a GMAT 700 level data sufficiency question. This is from the topic statistics. Concepts covered mean, median and range. What is the range of 5 distinct single digit positive integers if their average is 5? As always, we have two statements. Let's look at the statements in a while. Let's quickly understand what this question is about. This question is asking us to compute the range. For usually these what is kind of questions, the answer will be a value. When is the data sufficient if you're able to get a unique value for the range of these 5 numbers? When is the data consequently not sufficient? If from the information in the statements, we are not able to find even a single value, or if we get more than one value for the range, then the data is not sufficient, right? With this clarity, let's quickly jot down key points from the question stem and any inferences that we need to draw before we look into statement one. Here are the points. What is known about these numbers? These are fine numbers. They are distinct single digit positive integers essentially means that these numbers take values from 1 to 9 inclusive and these are unique, distinct, different values. Let's say these numbers are A, B, C, D, E and let this be the ascending order of these numbers. So A is going to be less than, B is going to be less than, C is going to be less than, D is going to be less than E. So what do we have to find out? We need to find out the value of E minus A. That's what we need to compute. What else information do we have? We have information about the average of these five numbers. The average of these five numbers is 5 which means the sum of these five numbers is 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E equals 25. What do we have to find? When will we say the data is sufficient? If we can get a unique value for E minus A. If we get a unique E and a unique A, will the value of E minus A be unique? Certainly yes. If we say E is equal to 9, A is equal to 3, the value of E minus A is unique and it's equal to 6. Having said this, this is the note that I want to draw. To get a unique value for E minus A, is it necessary that we necessarily will have to have a unique E and a unique A? Not necessary is the answer. Look at this. For example, this is an A and this is an A. E could be 9, A could be 2. What is the range? E minus A is a 7. E could be 8, A could be 1. What is the range? Still a 7. Do we have unique values for E and A? Let's say a statement left us as two possible values for E and A. But it gave us a unique value for E minus A. That is sufficient. Is it going to work this way in this question or not? We'll wait and see. But what is important is, I want to drive home the point. When you say, what is it, the condition that is required for, it to say, for us to say that the data is sufficient? Write this condition appropriately. Sometimes in deconstructing the question, we'll think in our mind saying that, I need a unique E, I need a unique A. You don't need a unique E and a A. What you need is a unique E minus A. With this, we'll get started with statement 1. Let's evaluate statement 1 alone. Statement 1 says that their median is 6. We set these numbers in ascending order or A, B, C, D, E. For odd number of numbers, the middle number is a median. In this case, 6 is the median. So numbers are A, B, 6, D and E. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E equals 25. Substitute C equals 6. So we get A plus B plus D plus E equals 19. So, and we also know that C is a 6. So, D comma E should be greater than 6. A comma B should be less than 6. These are distinct numbers. So, this much information is available with us. Let's look at, because D and E are greater than 6, what all possible values can D and E take? Let's get started with that, right? Both of them should be greater than 6. D and E, what values can they be? They could be a 7 and an 8, could be 7 and a 9, they could be 8 and 9. So, three possible values exist for D and E. Let's compute for each of these possible values, what values can E, A and B take? And therefore, what value can E minus A take? Let's start with the first possibility. If all of these three possibilities give us a unique value for the range, data is sufficient. If we get more than one value for the range, then the data is not sufficient. So the framework is clear for us now. So I'm going with the first possibility, 7 comma 8. So in the 7 comma 8, the value of E is equal to 8. 7 plus 8 is a 15. Let's plug it in here. We have A plus B plus 7 plus 8 is equal to a 19. This value is a 15. Take it to the right hand side. So we get A plus B is equal to a 4. A and B are less than 6 because C is a 6. A and B are single digit distinct positive integers. The only value of A and B that will satisfy this is when A equals 1 and B is equal to 3. We know the value for E as 8 in this option, in this possibility. Then the value of A works out to a 1. So what is the range if D and E end up being 7 and 8? 
the range is 8 minus 1, which is equal to 7. So if 7 and 8 are the values for D and D, our answer for the range is equal to a 7. Let's look at the second possibility. Second possibility is this could be a 7 and 9. So E obviously is 9. So A plus B plus 7 plus 9 equals a 19. 7 plus 9 is a 16. Take it to the right hand side. We we'll get the value of A plus B to be equal to a 3. A and B are less than 6, single digit distinct positive integers. The only value that will satisfy this is when A equals 1 and B equals 2. So what's the value of A? Unique value for A is a 1. What's the range in this case? E is a 9, A is a 1. So E minus A is equal to 8. So if D is a 7 and E is a 9, the value for the range is an 8. Do we have a unique value for the range from statement 1? Sometimes 7, sometimes 8. We needn't even look at the third possibility right now. As long as we haven't got a unique value, we can say that statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Eliminate answer options A and D. We are down to B, C or E. Let's look at statement 2 alone. If that's sufficient, we'll go with B. Otherwise, let's combine. But before that, let's summarize statement 1 in a printed form in the next slide. Values that D and D can take are these three possible values. Let's start with the first possibility of D being a 7 and E being an 8. So A plus B plus D plus E, that's a starting point, which is equal to 19. Substituting D and E as 7 and 8, we get A plus B equals 4. A and B less than 6, distinct positive, single digit positive integers. So A equals 1 is the inference that we draw. If A is a 1 and E is an 8, the range is equal to 7. So this is one possible value. For the second possibility, we went with D and E being a 7 and 9. We got the value of A plus B to be a 3. Therefore, A still maintains to be a 1. E is a 9. Therefore, the range is an 8. Last case, possibility 1, range was 7. Here, the range is 8. We don't have a unique value for the range. So, statement 1 is not sufficient. Quickly, just spend one minute on the third possibility, which is when D and E are 8 and 9. If D and E are 8 and 9, A plus B works out to a 2. Two distinct single digit positive integers will never add up to give us a value of 2. So this is an infeasible one. We don't even have to bother about it. Statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Eliminate answer options A and D. We are down to B, C, R, E. Let's look at statement 2 alone. Statement 2 tells us the following information. The average of the three largest among these five numbers is 7. Which is the three largest numbers? C, D and E. Their average is a 7, which means these three numbers will add up to C plus D plus C is equal to a 21. Consequently, what will be the value of A and B? Sum of A, B, C, D and E is equal to 25. C plus D plus E is equal to 21. So A plus B should be equal to 4. What values of A and B, single digit distinct positive integers will satisfy it? 2 plus 2 obviously is not possible. They are not distinct. So 1 and 3 are the only set of values for A and B, which means A equals 1 is something that we can deduce from statement 2. A is equal to 1. We know that C, D, E should add up to a 21. B is a 3 which means that C can take values which are only greater than 3. The least possible value for C is a 4. In that case, 4, 8, 9 is one possible value which will add up to a 21. C becomes a 4. D plus C should be equal to 17. The only possible values when they will add up to a 17 is basically 4, 8 and 9. Nothing else will work. Right. Next, C could be a 5. In that case, it's going to be a 7 and 9. C could be a 6. In that case, it's going to be a 7 and 8. So C, D, E have these three possible values. A has a unique value which is equal to 1. So what will be the range? If I look at 6, 7 and 8, then the range, because E is equal to 8, A is a 1, range is equal to 7. Let's look at 5, 7 and 9. In this case, E is equal to 9, A is equal to 1, range is equal to 8. Do we have a unique value for the range? We don't even have to look at this. In this case also, the range is going to be equal to an 8. We don't have a unique range from statement 2. Statement 2 alone is also not sufficient. Eliminate answer option B. We were down to C and D, B, C and D. Eliminate B. Now we are down to C or E. Summarize the proceedings in a printed form before we combine the two statements. Only possible value for A is equal to 1. How did we deduce that? We essentially got that C plus D plus E is equal to 21. A plus B is equal to 4. Distinct single digit positive integers adding up to 4. The values that A and B can take are 1 and 3. So A is equal to 1. C, D, E, what all values can they take? C has to be greater than 3. So least possible value for C is a 4. So with that, we had four, three possibilities for C, D and E. We got two ranges. One is 8, one is 7. No unique value for the range. Statement 2 alone is not sufficient. Eliminate answer option B. We are down to C or E. Evaluate the statements together. It's going to get more interesting now. Median is 6. The average of the three largest among the five numbers is 7. So we know that C plus D plus E is equal to 21. So from that, we deduced A plus B equals 4. So now we have a unique value for A. A is equal to 1. That is something that we have deduced from statement number 1. Now we know that C is equal to 6. 
I do not know whether you recall the possibilities from the previous statement. If you recalled it, you know that there is only one value that will satisfy it. If you did not recall, let's just go about it systematically. C is equal to a 6 which we know from statement 1. So 6 plus D plus E is equal to a 21. Which means D plus E is equal to a 15. D and D should be greater than 6. Distinct values which should add up to a 15. The only possible set that will make it work is when D equals 7 and E is equal to 8. If you have a unique value for E, unique E, unique A, so unique range which is equal to 7. Combining the two statements, we have a unique value for the range. The statements together are sufficient. C is the answer. I can quickly get back to what we discussed. In this particular example, it's so it ended up in such a way that we got a unique E and a unique A to arrive at a unique range. In some cases, you need not arrive at a unique E, unique A. As long as this range is unique, it would have been sufficient for us. Summarize it in a printed form, and then move on. You know that A is equal to 1. Once we know A is equal to 1, A plus B is equal to, this is A, this is B, C from the first statement is equal to 6. That leaves us with possible values for D and E to add up to 15. D and D should be greater than 6, distinct values. What will make it work? The only value that will make it work is when D equals 7, E equals 8. So unique value for range is equal to 7. Statements together are sufficient. Eliminate echo, we are down to C. C is the answer to the question. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash bizako and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.